Did 343 ban Fat Kid from the MCC? We have new gear as well as a Rockstar promotion, more HDS drama and Halo Infinite news along with a former Bungie era Halo developer recreates the Master Chief. We have that and a whole lot more in this video, so stay tuned throughout the whole thing to understand all the details. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Last Week in Halo, the one-stop shop of everything you need to know about Halo news that happened in the previous week. I know not everyone can catch up with all the news as soon as it happens, so every Monday morning we upload this video so you can get caught up in everything that happened last week in one video. I do have timestamps within this video guys so you can hop around to exactly what you want to listen to. Of course if you want all the details just listen through the whole thing. And if you want to catch the Halo news as soon as it happens guys make sure you tap subscribe on the channel, tap the like button as it really does help out the video and channel get more favorable within the algorithm and let's get right into the content here. So the first bit of news here guys is a mixed bag of various Halo stories that have been happening over the last week that might have fallen through the cracks you might have missed. One of them being that Fat Kid is apparently banned on the MCC. On the Halo Reddit page right here, it says Fat Kid Custom Game has been banned by 343 during the MCC flight, stating that the game mode uses profanity and obviously they can't allow that within the MCC, which is very odd because Fat Kid is one of those long running classic game modes that have happened in Halo since Halo 3. Now I can kind of understand that the name Fat Kid could be a little bit offensive, especially since the game mode was created like back in 2007, 2008, sometime around there, where People are a little bit less aware of people's sensitivities. And with almost 19,000 upvotes on Reddit, people were really kind of upset about this, saying like, hey, what's going on, 343? Why'd you have to go and do this? Well, Sketch actually hit up Twitter to kind of clarify this. That apparently it's an unintentional error, saying some wonkiness with the text string filtering rules it's been looked into. So this was a big concern that was happening over the last couple of days during the last week, and looks like it's just an error. When season eight finally rolls around for the MCC guys, you'll be able to play Fat Kid labeled as Fat Kid. The next bit of news is that we have Halo content coming in another Microsoft title outside of Halo. A recent update from the Forza Horizon 5 team put out a list of all the confirmed vehicles within the game. And as you scroll through the list, you have your Acuras, your Alpines, and all these other kind of Aston Martins, but then you look at this right here, the M12S Warthog CST, meaning the Warthog is returning with Forza Horizon 5. Now it was originally brought in during Forza Horizon 3, it was in 4, and now it looks like returning in 5 guys, which Forza Horizon 5 will be releasing on November 9th, so if you guys want to get a chance to play some Halo content before Halo Infinite's release on December 8th, well, that's going to be a great chance for you to jump in and do just that. Now a bit of Xbox leaked news here guys. Bolt Eastwood, who's been a bit of an insider when it comes to Xbox and Halo news, stated that Xbox has been quiet recently, things are about to change, stand by, with a Master Chief image right here. Obviously it's kind of a fan creation kind of thing, but hinting to maybe we get some Halo Infinite news relatively soon. Though I think he's really referencing something else. Referencing that Xbox Series X and S models could get an upgrade for 2022 and 2023. Saying that the rumored of the PS5 Pro model and with an AK support for that could also see that same kind of upgrade AK support coming with Xbox Series X and S. Obviously, as the story progresses, guys, I'll let you guys keep you updated on this channel as well. So this section, we're talking about various promotions that are gonna be coming for Halo Infinite, as well as some gear that you can purchase right now, which looks pretty cool and Halo influenced. Now, some of you might remember this back in May of 2021, that we had this reveal from a Twitter user showcasing a Rockstar energy drink involving with Halo Infinite in some capacity. We've heard nothing about this since May 26th. This can looks like they have some kind of QR code that you can access, probably get some more goodies right there. This is a collector set, five out of five, so possibly there's some kind of collection stuff going on with that. Maybe some in-game content, but we finally had it confirmed by Rockstar last week. This tweet from Rockstar Energy saying that it's coming on October 1st of 2021. We have the Halo Infinite Energy Drink. And if you click on the website, all you get is just this promo page right here kind of holding people over. You get the chance to watch the trailer that comes with it, which is actually the kind of a nice trailer as well as the countdown for when October 1st finally rolls around. Once it does, guys, I guarantee I'll let you guys know on this channel if there's any cool promotions, weapon coatings, or anything like that for you guys to pick up. So. Keep that in mind in the future. Numskull merch actually has released a few 20th anniversary bits of Halo gear for you to pick up, like a hat, you got a thermos, a mug, 
some USB cables. You have uh, actually a pretty actually nice looking scarf and a really awesome looking holiday sweater, which I honestly might just have to pick this up because this would be absolutely perfect for a Christmas holiday. Another 20th anniversary release from Cable Guide. They have a phone slash controller holder that has your favorite Cortana right here, as well as the Mustard Chef himself as well. So if you guys look in the market for a controller holder or a phone holder, well, now is the time to do just that. And the last bit of Halo gear you can pick up, guys, is an external hard drive from Seagate, which is a rather reputable brand. I actually have some Seagate hard drives in my computer right now, and we have a Halo Infinite external hard drive for you guys to have some fun with. Has some cool extra lights right here on the drive itself to kind of make it look a little more flashy. You can get a five terabyte or two terabyte, and you have various locations where you can buy this from. And as games get larger and larger, Halo Infinite is going to be a live service game. You're probably going to need an external hard drive. And coming this fall, you might just have to pick up a Master Chief external hard drive. Now this next section is talking about the HCS side of things as it seems like every week there's some kind of new development or some new drama going around and there's been a lot of drama this week as the top 25 players of all time countdown has started this week and it's been full of controversy especially with two specific rankings. But well, first we have the announcement of a Halo Infinite roster with the team that has not been partnered with any team yet so far and one of the partnered organizations part of Halo has also announced their groups as well. This tweet here from Mista Shah posts up saying their team that they're going to be rolling with for Halo Infinite. Really exciting stuff. They're great to see that these people are just so excited to jump in to play some Halo. This is their roster that they currently do not have a team right now. And there are some partner teams with Halo Infinite that don't have any rosters right now at the moment. So we could see these people get picked up. And we've actually heard some good things about some of these players. Well-known Halo Pro Trippy says that Shabby, who is right over here on the right side, is one hell of a player. So keep an eye out for this team for the HCS. One of the partner teams for HCS just made a big announcement of their roster with Obviously, we have Elamite Warrior being the coach for the team. Just announced two players that are going to be part of it, which is Ace, who's actually Elamite's brother. And we also have Tylenol, who's a very well-known streamer, especially in the MCC side of things, is going pro as well. So it's super exciting to see some more content creators jump in to the ring for competitive Halo. But we still need to find out who the two other players will be. We'll keep the guys posted on this channel as soon as Space Station Gaming, who's one of the partnered. So we're definitely going to know a lot more about this team and see them around a whole heck of a lot. So it's definitely to keep, important to keep in mind with this organization. And into the HCS drama that's been going on all last year week and that was the announcements of 25 through 11 top 25 players of all time. The drama first started on September 8th with T Squared who is one of the greatest players to ever play Halo got ranked 17th out of this list of the top 25 best Halo players of all time. As you can see with 10 land wins, 55 plus top 8 finishes, T Squared was one of the best players out there. He was even featured on multiple soda cans for Dr. Pepper. He really helped bring competitive gaming from the bedroom to the main stage and the community wasn't really too happy about this. Where Ogre 2 is widely held as probably the greatest of all time, so this, should, this guy should have been higher. And T Squared himself even replied this saying April Fools was months ago. Halo commentator Wonderboy even put out this excellent meme tweet which I actually referenced in my previous video. Anyways, he's on millions of Dr. Pepper bottles worldwide, won plenty of events across the first three Halo games. He transcended the game, really, and they only put him 17? Can you believe that? But the S really didn't hit the fan until this ranking of Ogre 1. One of the most dominant players ever in Halo history got ranked number 11, giving him making it into the top 10 list of players. But you can kind of tell it might have made Ogre 1 a little mad because he changed his Twitter name to Ogre 11. And the reason why people are so upset about this ranking for Ogre 1 is because it really shouldn't be like that. Uh, this tweet by Presselens right here really helps put perspective of how good of a player Ogre 1 was. His Ogre 1 was in the Grand Finals whenever he competed. He was in the Finals 83% of the time and won 67% of those titles. He was a nearly guaranteed top 8 with a 96% top 8 finishing right there. So this guy, and you can see that on this list right here of these all these other amazing Halo players, that Ogre 1 and Ogre 2 are up above pretty much everybody else, like head and shoulders above everybody else when it comes to the amount of wins that they had. Now he might have been placed a little bit lower as the number of events that he did. He kind of dropped off during Reach and afterwards he didn't really compete a whole lot, so that maybe that could play into a factor of it. But his average position of 
second place is one of the highest, if not the highest, out of all competitive Halo players of all time. That's why it has a lot of people pretty salty about the whole thing. But as the list stands right now, you have Ryan Noob, Sane, Fear Itself, Mick Wynn, Victory X, Legit, Karma, Strong Side, T Squared, Ace, Heinz, Shotzi, APG, Elamite, as well as Ogre One. Now the next week, top 10s gonna be very different as there are gonna be videos for these corresponding on the HTS YouTube channel. So again, if there's anything interesting on there, you guarantee I'll report it on the channel here, guys. And now finally, some Halo Infinite news. We actually got a date for the next flight for us, guys. And that date is gonna be September 24th is when the next flight is going to happen. They do mention that your last day to fully register for the Halo Insider program is on September 13th, which is, well, today if you're watching this video the day it's posted though community director sketch actually gave us some additional details of what's going in with this flight saying in case you missed it bots will be back with some improvements academy will return with some updates and the addition of training mode and there will be a much bigger focus on arena pvp this time including a new map and some objective modes BTB is on the menu as well, which is super exciting stuff, guys. Great to see that even from the last flight, we're already seeing improvements coming in. I guess this is kind of the reason why we flight in the first place. It's pretty awesome. Now, I did make a video talking about all this as well, talking about what training mode is going to be like, as well as the new map that's coming in with the game. And it seems like training mode is going to be like this custom games bots kind of thing where you can kind of set up different settings how you would like. You can jump in, warm up and play against some bots. So I think it's kind of maybe just like a solo thing or maybe you can have your friends jump in with it as well. That'd be great. This flight will be PVP focused though with Arena as well as BTB. Hopefully enough people join in with the flight and sign up correctly because last time there was over 100,000 people who improperly signed up or the insider flight. Also talked about the next map being most likely Behemoth as we saw this in a cannon fodder, but we didn't actually get a chance to play within the last build of the technical preview. So I'm assuming we'll see that map come involved with us. This is the 4v4 map that actually has vehicles in it. So there'll be a very different experience than what we had during the flight. And BTP most likely just happening on the map fragmentation as well, that's all we know of right now. Of course, if there are more maps or more content as well, guys, I guarantee I'll let you guys know on this channel. But we have a lot of changes coming from the last preview into this technical preview. I wanted to go over those for you guys real quickly, saying there's gonna be an updated Needler, Plasma Pistol, and Gravity Handler sound effects. The motion tracker is back, no longer the ability tracker that we had in the previous flight. You'll be able to preview your AI voice before jumping into the game. AI and Spartan Chatter will be reduced a little bit, so you'll be hearing over yonder a little bit less. The new medals that we showcased in a previous video as well will be part of this next flight. There'll be improvements to Overshield to showcase who has Overshield, as well as being able to have more Shield Flare to show guys how much damage a player has taken we have also seen improvements of five times scopes on the sniper rifle when it comes to handling because it's been feeling kind of chunky and sluggish previous flight had a bug where the screen shake when you disable it wasn't actually disabling that should work as well as the draw ball has been improved where it deploys faster it'd be a little bit more effective within the battles now of course once that flight happens guys i'll be going on the channel here breaking down all the changes that actually took place so you can see and hear all these awesome fixes to halo infinite before the release of the game and the last bit of halo infinite news for you guys we actually had a video from 343 posted up on the Halo channel talking about how to sign up properly for the Insider program. Again, this might be kind of straightforward information for a lot of people. Essentially, what you need to do is make sure that all your check marks are green when signing up, because like I said earlier, there were over 100,000 people who improperly signed up for the flight. I actually had friends who improperly signed up for the flight, and I tried, man. I was promoting it, but you know, sometimes instructions can be a little misleading at times for people. So I would suggest just looking over this video just to make sure that your profile is up to date and proper as they showcase it here within this video, just to make sure everything is working as it should. So you should get invited because if you're part of the Insider program, if you're signed up, you should be getting an invite for this next flight as they're gonna be inviting more people into this technical preview for the game on September 24th. And the last bit of news for us guys, former Bungie era Hill developer Marcus Leto has been working on a high res, really good version of the Master Chief from CE. And he's been teasing this work on Twitter for quite some time. Honestly, since July, he's been kind of working this on his free time showcasing the original Master Chief model and how he's been kind of adding to it for some time now. And he finally put it all together for a nice little Twitter post for us to all to enjoy. 
And here's the final post, got it all done in Unreal 4, and guys, this just looks so freaking cool. I mean, he did this previously with the Warhog back during December, and now he did this with the Master Chief, and just seeing just like the like original art director of Halo recreate the Master Chief in such a high resolution, it just looks so cool. And they posted it in a nice cool environment to kind of give you a better look of exactly how it should look like within an environment. Again, very awesome stuff. And he even dropped a little bit of interesting lore to go along with the Halo ring as well. Saying, a few have been asking how tall the side of the walls of the Halo ring are from my perspective. I figured the atmosphere is retained by assisted gravity technology, not nearly as thick as Earth's, but it would still get pretty thin near the containment walls. And you kind of just see like the perspective and scale of what we're kind of looking at here for the Halo ring, which is obviously something we, you know, kind of know of, but it's just cool to kind of see it like in this visual diagram. And just for reference, guys, here you also posted a nice little diagram here of showcasing the size of the earth versus a halo ring saying that the diameter of the earth is just under 13,000 kilometers as where a halo ring is 10,000 kilometers so almost like a full circumference of earth is about the size of current halo rings within the halo lore and so just like a really fun kind of interesting thing guys that, you know, obviously i don't think it's really something worth making an entire video of but something i think i want to share with the community because i think it's just such a cool thing to show to us halo fans and i'm just I think it was just such a cool thing I had to share with you guys. So that's everything that happened last week in Halo, guys. If you want to stay updated with everything going on with Halo as we ramp up to the release of Halo Infinite, make sure you tap subscribe, check out this playlist right here for all my other Halo news and informational videos. Thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.